Hey guys, Mike Watson from Catalyst Fitness. Today I'm going to take you through a good, better, and best approach to determining max heart rate so that you can establish training zones for your clients in the gym. Now we can make this very, very complicated and make it so that everybody kind of um, has an opportunity to screw this up, or we can make it very, very simple so that it is scalable and so that any of your coaches in the gym can grab this and go. So we have a formula written on the board in our main gym at Catalyst, which is this. It's 180 minus age divided by 0 0.70. This is our max heart rate formula. It's developed by a guy named Dr. Phil Maffetone. The Maffetone Method is a great book. If you haven't picked that one up yet, it's a great place to start and it's a great resource for your coaches to be able to explain what we're trying to do in the gym nice and simply. So if I take my age, I'm 43 years old, 180 minus my age gives me 137 uh, beats per minute. 180 minus my age on its own is going to give me my high end for my theoretical zone two. We don't need that right now, but what we do need is max heart rate. So we're going to take 137 divided by 0.7, and that's going to give me a max heart rate of 196 beats per minute. So what I'm going to do with that is import it into my training app. We use one right now called Self Loops. Self Loops is a fantastic in-gym platform that will broadcast heart rates up onto the TV, the visual is nice, it's easy for people to follow, they don't have to look at their phones or their watches as they're working out. So my max heart rate is going to get put into that platform and it's going to give me some calculations based on that number. We're doing pretty good. We figured this out so we've given ourselves a nice starting point. Um, the other way that we can do this is to have a look at somebody's wearable. So I'm wearing a Garmin, um, you can use uh, any sort of um, Apple Watch or wrist-based technology and have a look at your client's recent exercise data or have them look at it before they come in. And what we want to look for is the highest number or the highest heart rate number that they've achieved in training over the last couple of weeks. Assuming, of course, that there hasn't been a huge interruption in training because of illness or injury uh, or a variety of other reasons. We want to have some regularity. But we want to look at what they've achieved. If it's a little bit higher than this number, then we're going to give them a couple more points. As an example, if I saw 197 or 198 uh, on my wearable, I might throw that number in there into the equation. Our better approach is going to be to actually test someone. So in the gym, we're going to put them, uh, strap them up with their heart rate monitor, and we're going to put them through a test uh, that is designed to elicit something close to a max heart rate. One way to do this, and a really easy way to do this, is to set up a ramp testing protocol. So starting nice and easy, and then progressively going harder and harder and harder. We use the assault bike at the gym, okay? And then what happens is that test is over when that person can't keep up with the ramp test, and we're usually gonna get a pretty high number out of that. The other way to do this is in a CrossFit style workout. We've used uh, Fight Gone Bad recently, um, to elicit a high heart rate or Fran, something uh, along those lines where we're looking at a really high sustained output. And usually those numbers between the ramp test and those in-gym workouts are going to be very, very similar if we're calculating or figuring out that number correctly. So once we figure out that number, we can replace our, our theoretical number with an actual tested number. We're doing pretty good now. Um, in fact, we're almost doing better than what we were <laughs> with just the uh, calculation. The best way to do this, um, which is something I'm really, really excited about that we've been playing around with for a while now at Catalyst is this uh, metabolic testing unit called the Panoe. Panoe is spelled P-N-O-E. Um, it's a really cool um, max VO2 testing. So you're wearing a mask, a little backpack. You can literally use the testing unit to do any activity inside or outside. It works really, really well to test people in the gym in a controlled environment though, because we can use that information to figure out a lot of things. Um, Chris and I are gonna do a little bit of a intro and educational uh, package to put together for those of you that have this, because there's a lot of really cool ways that we can use this unit to help you guide your client's nutrition. Uh, if you have clients that race or compete, we can dial that nutrition and those heart rates in, and we can uh, add in really, really specific heart rate zones once we have that testing uh, capability. The other thing that testing does uh, and why it's the best is it is, gives us a lot more precision and it allows us to retest to make sure that the programming that we're doing is actually working. 
Um, so if we're trying to improve somebody's metabolic flexibility, then we want to be able to retest in six or eight weeks and show them that that was exactly what we did. And if we didn't, then we need to find out what the hole in our program is and go from there. So good, better, best. Calculation, 180 minus your age divided by 70, 0.7. Um, using your wearable is going to be pretty good, especially if you've had a client who's pushed themselves in exercise wearing that technology. Better is going to be putting them through a test while wearing a heart rate monitor, and the best is going to be actual metabolic testing. We reserve metabolic testing for a lot of our more competitive athletes, but there's no reason that you can't use it for um, your general population athletes to really dial things in. So we'll teach you that at a later date. For now, follow your heart. We'll talk to you soon.